Are you sick of not getting the client referrals you deserve? Are you tired of, are you tired of feeling like you have to beg or push your clients? Bill Kanoki used to work in the car industry um, and there's lots of preconceived notions about people who sell like used cars, for example. Are you fed up with trying to keep you in touch with everybody all the time? What if there was a better way? So this is the internal marketing machine, a proven paint by numbers process that will keep you in touch with your clients multiple times a month get them to think about you all the time, and generate a large number of referrals every 90 days without you having to ask. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so this is for you if you are tired of being one of the best kept secrets in your business and you know you're doing a great job for your customers and they're just not telling anyone. Like, why aren't you telling people about how fabulous we are? Um, so we will cover the three ways to get your clients referring like crazy without having to ask. Why wouldn't you do this? Well, I already know my clients. Well, how come they're not referring more? Oh, well, I keep in touch with them already. I send them our generic corporate bland newsletter. I send them emails that they don't open. I touch them already. I call them once a year on their birthday. I already asked them for referrals and they didn't give me any. So if you ask someone for a referral and they can't think of any, they, one, they might feel put on the spot. Oh crap, I gotta think of someone. And then if they don't, they feel bad. If you do that, because Bill taught you to be persistent and to remember to do this every single time you met with them, well, Bill wouldn't tell you that, but the, if you did this every single time, how many times are they gonna like being put on the spot? If they know, oh, I gotta go see somebody, go see them, but I know he's gonna ask me for referrals and I don't have any, how many times are they gonna cancel their meeting or go away without telling you? So this is our way of getting your clients referring like crazy without having to ask. Uh, so the first thing is you've got to go beyond the money or go beyond whatever it is that you do. So we do a direct mail <coughs> survey. We tried doing it online, no one filled it out. We found if we sent like a four page, yes four pages, direct mail survey, we get a very high percentage of clients to fill it out and mail it back. And you're not going to ask them about what you do. So you're not going to ask them about how fabulous their car repair experience was. Ah, okay. I thought that was crime scene investigation, but <laughs> I wasn't sure. He's doing murder scenes. You're doing, you guys got a, there's a joint venture there. You kill him, we clean him. I don't know how that works. That would be a good slogan. Um, you could put that on Silk Road if they're still up or something. All right. So you've got to ask him questions that are not related to what you do because you're trying to get to know them outside of what you do. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So you will see in this case, there are questions about um, check your hobbies and interests, wine tasting, travel, golf, internet, gardening. Um, we ask them what type of magazines they read. We ask them what books they read, what authors they follow, what music they listen to, what movies they like. Because we're going to use it all in a minute to make them refer like crazy and I'll show you how. After we get all of this data back, we put it into an Excel spreadsheet or a CRM system depending on how tech savvy you are. Um, where literally there's a tab, in this case in Excel, there's a tab for every interest and then I can just go and that'll have a list of all of the clients who check that box. So I can say wine tasting, give me everybody who likes wine. And now I can do a wine tasting promotion which we're going to talk about in a minute. You could do this in a CRM, fancy software program, you could do it in Google Docs, however you track it, does, shoe box, doesn't matter. And then we start touching them more often. And I'm going to give you an example of somebody, we have an implementation contest every month for those of you who don't know who are new. So if you implement something you learned today and you report back before next month, you get to compete to see who, who implemented the best and win a prize is 100 bucks in cash. So one of our, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so then we're going to start touching them on a regular basis. I'm going to show you the software that does it. Um, so you need to keep in touch with them multiple times a month in things that are not related to your business. They have to be warm and fuzzy. Because if Dean sends a four page newsletter out about the latest and greatest in orthodontic equipment, nobody actually cares but Dean. All right, Andy cares, Andy saved you. Uh, send, send Andy the newsletter, I'm sure he'll buy a lot of whiz bang glop machinery. So 
Um, when I was a freshman in college, I had a roommate that I couldn't stand. And one of the one good thing that came out of that was he had a poster in his room on his side of the dorm room that said 365 reasons to drink. And I thought at the time it was really dumb. When I became a marketer, I thought it was brilliant because there were all these stupid holidays that nobody's ever heard of that were reasons to drink. I went back, I found it on eBay, I bought the poster, and it became our marketing calendar. I definitely had that poster. <laughs> I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> so, for example, March is National Optimism Month. So this is a direct mail postcard, smiley face, happy, March, happy National Optimism Month, March is National Optimism Month, it's real, I checked, I'm optimistic about spring coming, the weather changing, if you're in Buffalo, um, I'm optimistic about a relationship with you and hope you're thinking warm and fuzzy thoughts as well. That's a warm, fuzzy piece. It's not designed to make the phone ring. It's not designed to sell anything. It's solely designed to get them to go, aw, and that's it. Feel warm and fuzzy and remember you. There is a ratio of how to do this that I will teach you that if you follow the ratio of two to one, it works every time. What I mean by two to one is you have to send two warm, fuzzy pieces before you can send something that is a hard ask, that is promotional, that is give me a referral, come to an event, buy more shit, buy more stuff, sorry. Sorry, you're virgin ears, you got teenagers. It's on tape. It's on tape, sorry. So if January is warm fuzzy, if February is warm fuzzy, then March could be a hard ask. April, May, warm fuzzy, warm fuzzy, June, hard ask. When you do your marketing calendar, you would set this up. So for example, if you're an accountant, March, April 15th, March should be a hard ask. So I wanna make sure January, February, warm fuzzy. If there are dates related to your business, Hey, December's coming up, you gotta, get, you gotta buy equipment to cover the tax thing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an example of a warm fuzzy. So January could be Happy New Year. February could be Happy Valentine's Day, we love serving you. And then March could be, are you optimistic about your nest egg? If you're not, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we're, once a month, we're gonna send them a postcard. Once a month, we're gonna send them a direct mail newsletter. Print, four page newsletter. It is specifically designed to look like it was done in Microsoft Word by my 11 year old, but it wasn't. It's designed to look amateurish, like someone in your office did it. If you send them, we tested a gorgeous, slick, glossy, high-end, professionally done graphic design, something Kristen would make that you're like Nobody buys from those because they're too slick. They know you bought it somewhere, you didn't do it and it's not personal. When we tested it and we sent, literally this is one of our, this is Richard, this is one of our clients, and it made it, printed at Kinko's, 11 by 17 folded in half, is four, eight and a half by 11 pages. It works like crazy. Now here's the other cool part of it. It can't be all about your business. The ratio is 75-25. 75% warm and fuzzy, 25% promotional about your business. So you'll see monthly humor. We got a joke of the month, quotes of the month, crossword puzzles, uh, inspirational stuff, hobby stuff, just lifestyle random stuff. And then family update is the most important column of the newsletter, which is you or your staff, what are you doing outside of work? So in this case, his wife was pregnant with baby number three. Um, so that's the family update. Um, so. When we send ours out, if I don't put pictures of my kids, I get angry phone calls. I literally get clients calling going, what are your kids up to? You know, I didn't get a picture. So I know I did it right. So what we did in ours is we put the one promotional column right next to the pictures of the kids. Because we know, and we don't put the kids on the cover because we want them to have to open it to see the pictures of the kids. And then we put the promotional column here because people will call and go, oh my God, Ella's so cute. I, I hope she gets that Broadway show part that she, got, that she auditioned for. And oh, by the way, there was something over there I'm supposed to buy. What is it? I'm supposed to buy those Bluetooth beacons. How do I sign up? They feel connected. They, they feel, feel they can relate to you. They're <laughs> empathetic. They like you. Exactly. Now, what do you do if you don't have little cute kids? You can rent them. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have to be kids. It could be pets. We have our pet advisor has pictures of their cats and dogs. If you don't have pets or you don't have kids, um, we have a dentist in another state who made many celebrities in his newsletter out of his staff. So there's an article this month, what's Kristen up to? Oh, she was in her friend's wedding, here's a picture. 
What's Bruce up to? Bruce just became president of the temple, so he's even busier than he was before, and I can't believe they sucked him in. <laughs> um, I told him not to, you know. So he would write up soap opera storylines about Kristen is fighting with Tatum over who, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and people would come in fascinated by this stuff, going, hey, is Jan really mad? It's reality TV. It's reality TV and print. If you think about it, I had two reality TV type things that made me a hero to my wife in the last month or two. One was when I was at a conference in Vegas, I ran into Sheena Shea from Vanderpump Rules and I got her to do a video for my wife going, hi Rebecca, blah, 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 blah. And she's obsessed with that show as is Alyssa in our office and it's not I'm like, I care. I'm, I'm watching the marketing of the restaurant, for those of you who know the show. And, and, and all she cares about is the millennial girls fighting with each other. And who's sleeping with who? Again. The whole premise of the show. And I'm like, every time I'm frustrated as a business owner because their, their staff causes so much drama, I'm like, I would have fired them all the first week. This is ridiculous. Why does she keep them? I'm like, for the show, for the ratings. That's not how you run a business. That's how you run a reality show. The other one was, um, I just interviewed, Kevin Harrington and I just interviewed yesterday for our podcast, the Holderness family. So some of you who have kids who are young enough know who they are, Google them. Um, they are YouTubers. Um, they make parodies of songs. So they will do Welcome to Miami by Will Smith, but they'll rewrite all the words and sing it about their hyperactive, wonderful kids. Um, or they'll write original songs, like Pen the husband wrote a song about the 27 different kinds of soap his wife has. It's like, I have one bar of soap. Why do you have 27 different bottles? So they have 100 million views on YouTube. Um, and so after the interview, I said, would you guys do me a favor? My wife and kids are huge fans. They couldn't be here today. Um, so they shot a, two a minute video saying hi to Rebecca and the kids and talking about what our kids were up to because they asked. Um, and so Rebecca posted on Facebook, like, you're my hero. Okay, and then make it easy, so easy they want to be a part of it. So you're going to touch them with a postcard every month, you're going to touch them with a newsletter every month, and then every quarter, every 90 days, you're going to do a themed client appreciation event. Now they've got to be physical in order to do this. You can do it virtually, it's a little more creative, and we can talk about that in a minute. But let's say that you have 12 people who are into wine tasting. Go do a wine tasting but the cost of admission is they have to bring a friend they drink wine with. Because if they're drinking alone, that's a sign of a problem. So if I have 12, stereotypical, I have 12, if I'm a financial advisor and I have 12 women, 12 women and their husbands coming to my wine tasting and they're bringing 12 other couples who like wine, the magic happens. There's no sales pitch, there's no PowerPoint, there's no presentation at the event, it's just a wine tasting. And they're sitting there going, our advisor doesn't do anything like this for us. And magically, you have new clients. These are pictures from some of our clients' events. You can give away swag bags. You can have fun stuff. Um, so again, go beyond the money or whatever it is that you do. So you want to survey them so you can segment them. So then I can send custom events. I don't invite everybody to the wine tasting because they won't all care. I only invite the wine people because they love it. And then I keep in touch with them all the time, every other week. And then if I just say, hey, who do you know who needs some payroll done? Nobody answers. But if I say, hey, my buddy Andy's throwing a golf outing. I know you play golf, you wanna come with me. There's this awesome golf pro, Gary Okino, who's doing a lesson. And they're like, yeah, of course I wanna go. But you have made it a caveat to me, whoever I bring has to own a business too because Joe Schmo, who plays golf, who works at GM, isn't going to do you any good on the payroll side. Uh, do, 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 do. Those aren't supposed to be there. I'm going to skip that. It's really going to increase your social life. It doesn't. So I got in trouble for this. So um, when, I start, when I invented this process um, like 12 years ago, what happened was all of a sudden, I'll show you two more things we were doing. And I'll show you why Rebecca stopped coming to the events. Uh, sorry, that's a test. Um, so two other really cool ideas you can do with this is let's say that you know that your Mr. Jones has a birthday coming up. Or well, I'll say Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones has a birthday coming up. And I look on my sheet, and I know that Mrs. Jones like red wine, dark chocolate, and John Travolta. 
So I'm gonna send her a gift basket for her birthday. I'm not gonna send her a corporate card. I'm not gonna go to the dollar store. I'm gonna send her a box of six wine glasses, six Godiva dark chocolate bars, a bottle of red wine, a grease DVD, and six movie tickets. Six, because she's gonna have two other couples come over, have wine, have chocolate, and go to the movies to see John Travolta's new movie. And they're gonna say, where did you get this? And she's gonna say, from my marketing guy. And they're gonna go, our marketing company doesn't do that. And now I have two referrals. Or if let's say Mr. Jones is an A++ client and you wanna blow him away, you call Mrs. Jones and you say, see Mr. Jones has a birthday next month, you guys have been client, you know, I so appreciate your business, you're like family here. Uh, just curious, you have plans on Mr. Jones' birthday? Yeah, we're going to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you're here the day before, day after? Yes. What's Mr. Jones' favorite restaurant? Ruth's Chris. Um, you know, just thinking here, what about if we do a birthday dinner? What if you and Mr. Jones and four of your other favorite couples, we go and we have dinner at Ruth's Chris, my treat, just a way to say thanks. No, 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 you couldn't possibly do that. No, 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 they will always say no. No, I, you know what, let me just see if Ruth's Chris has a table for eight that night. I'll call, you think about who you would want to come if we did it, and I'll call you back. Magically, Ruth's Chris has a table available, um, and she's like, oh, these are the four couples. You know what? Does Mr. Jones like surprises or hate surprises? Because nobody's in the middle or lukewarm about surprises. Loves them. Great. Let's do a surprise party. Hates them. Great. Let's tell them. I'll send the invitations to these four couples. Uh, you want to give me some addresses real quick? Um, don't worry. No sales pitch. No PowerPoint. No demo of the new orthodontia machinery. Just, we're going to go have a nice dinner. Oh my God. Thank you so much. You go have a nice dinner. They're blown away. Those four other couples go, our person's not doing that. How come we don't get that service? There's actually a very famous study in the financial services industry, and I keep using examples because it's half of our client base, um, that surveyed multi-million dollar investors and asked them when they, who left one firm and went to another. And they asked them why. No, the number 14 reason, 14th, was investment performance. So number 14 was they didn't make me enough money on my money. Number one, was lack of contact. Customer service, wasn't touched, didn't feel loved. When they show up for dinner and see you through him a birthday dinner and that your people don't do that, you're in. Jerry Maguire. Yes, I, it's funny, I did this, um, I first started doing this, was 2010, 11, and um, Rebecca's like, you're making me work. I gotta go to dinner like every other week. I'm like we get to go to a nice restaurant, you get to meet nice people. Yeah, but I have to network with them and I'm pregnant and I'm tired. And so finally I let her off, I let her off the hook because she was pregnant. When she got too pregnant, I was like, okay, you can stay home. Um, but it's funny, we did this with, um, I have clients from 13 years ago that we got from birthday dinners that are still clients. Questions on that before we move into the next one? Yeah, on your mailer that you sent out to collect the data? Yes. yes. What's the re response rate on that percentage? So it varies depending on your relationship with your customers. They haven't heard from you in 10 years. They may not fill it out. Um, but if they're hearing from you on some type of regular basis, if they feel like they know you in some way, shape, or form, um, we're getting over 20% which you got 100 clients, you got 20 who now gave you all of this information, you're golden. You got a couple hundred clients and you get a bunch back, you're all set. We've had advisors who got a much higher, people who got a much higher response rate. They, the, that tends to be a function of how often you're talking to your clients already. What about, I mean, what about bringing in new clients? If you bring in a new client, they have to fill it out. We do. It's now, for all of our people that we do this for, it's now part of the new client indoctrination process. They fill it out in the first meeting. So then you don't have to mail it anymore. They've got it right away. And if you haven't ever done anything like this, um, we send something first called a confession letter. And I'm gonna show you Dean's, um, because in our implementation contest this month, Dean did a confession letter, even though he wasn't the one who had anything to confess. The company he works for, the, his predecessor, is, did the screw up. But I'll show that to you because it's working really well. Um, 
This is a really cool email technique that we just learned that costs nothing. It's called the nine word email. So the email is this. You're going to tweak it a little bit. The subject line is their name. And it's one sentence. In this case, this was a DC realtor who said, are you still looking for a house in Georgetown? So your nine words are, are you still blank? Whatever it is you do. So this is for people who have been on your list in some way, shape, or form and haven't bought. Old prospects, haven't bought, haven't bought lately, haven't bought often enough, haven't spent enough money. So mine is, are you still looking for help with your marketing? Are you still looking to grow your business? Are, for different product we have, are you still looking to launch a podcast? For whatever our service happens to be that we're selling. It's just nine words. Um, you will get, don't send this via HTML, don't use a fancy email software like Con Constant Contact or Infusionsoft or Aweber. Literally just cut and paste it a million times. And don't do a ton at once because people will actually respond. Um, we sent one out the other day. Again, this is not normal, but we had like 32% of the people replied back to me. Um, now some of them were, no, I'm good, but we got a ton of appointments of people going, yeah, I am. I'm sorry. I, they always blame themselves. I'm sorry I lost touch with you. I would like to talk some more. And these are all unconverted leads. People who opted in for a webinar, who got on our list some way, shape, or form and never bought. And it's reactivating them. What's the subject line? Their name. Just, Just their name. Just Adrian. If I'm emailing you. Adrian, are you still looking for more divorce clients? And you would say, yes, I am. So Seth, what if you work? I, I, look at my, I look at my phone. I've got 2,500 phone numbers in here. And I have no idea what the hell the years I've collected that. I have no idea. How can I incorporate that? Because I, I, I mean, I have actually no idea how these got in here originally. So I had that exact same, I had that problem on LinkedIn. I have over 5,000 LinkedIn connections, 99% I bet I don't know. Right. Um, so what I did was I used the professional relationship management software I showed you last month. Right. And I sent an email that said, um, it was a longer than nine words, but it was really short. It said, as I'm winding on down, as we're winding down 2018, um, part of my efforts for next year are to make real connections with people where you and I are connected on LinkedIn. I don't know if we actually, I don't think we actually really know each other. Um, would you be open to just a 15 minute phone call to see if it makes sense to really connect outside of LinkedIn or do you not want to bother? And I had an insane response. I, that's why I got 19 appointments in 24 hours of people I never knew that I was connected to on LinkedIn going, hey, do you want to actually connect? You talked last month that you were coming up with a program that that was going to happen. Is it now yes. up and running? It is. It's uh, professionalrelationshipmanager.com. Now, if you go to that website, if you go to that website, that particular website is set up for executive recruit job searchers, mm -hmm. um, guys looking for new roles at big companies, because that's this software was created by a headhunting company. So if you go to professionalrelationshipmanager.com forward slash marketers dash only, you will see a separate page I created that is just for B2B marketing that isn't for job searching. Because if you go to the regular site, those are webinar there about how to use this to get a better job, get a new job that you could honestly skip. So get professional. Relationshipmanager.com forward slash marketers dash only. There is no webinar teaching you, showing it yet because I haven't created one on the marketing side. Because again, they hired us to go get executive job searchers right. to use their software. And I said, that's great, but this is a marketing gold mine. In response to you having um, phone numbers, though. Text them. Yeah, I'm Nine sorry, and I lost numbers. Who was this again? Just kind of like reintroduce yourself. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think that. I actually logged them in and started the call. And, it's and then once guessing. you know in their notes under their contact, put who they are and where they're from and everything. I might, that's awesome. So I went also text them before you call them. Because if you call out of the blue, they may not answer. They may not recognize your number. And then you may catch them busy and they may be like annoyed. I might, if it's a cell number, I might text it first. Hey, this is Bill Kenoki. I found your number in my, my phone. I got a new phone. 
I don't know who you are. I don't have your contact record saved. I apologize. Who is this? I'm trying to figure out who everybody is in my phone all over again. Most of the time, if they recognize your name, they're going to respond to that. Yeah. yeah, right. And everybody's had that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. very yeah. relatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had somebody, one of our clients, text me the other week, who is this? And I said, uh, Seth? And they're like, I'm sorry, new phone. I switched from Apple to Samsung and not, not, nothing translated. I'm like, there's an app for that, but OK. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this was one we did that for executive recruiting, which was the recruiting firm sent this. Hi, Susan, are you still available like for a position? Lots of people know I'm happy, I'm good, I got my job, I'm, I'm fine. And they generate a ton of business of people going, yeah, you got anything for me. I will give you one other strategy. This is working business to business to get in somewhere. So this is cold. So this one, you could send this to unconverted leads. The one I'm about to give you is cold. Like you're trying to find the right person at a company to get in with. So subject line is appropriate person. John, I'm writing to you in the hopes of finding the appropriate person who handles X. Whatever that is. Handles marketing, handles purchases of orthodontic equipment, handles senior moot, whatever. Who handles seminars at the nursing home. I'm making shit. Ski, ski instructor development. <laughs> I've received emails to our See? Look at that. But those, uh, you know, those this isn't the whole email. I'm no, but sorry, just to back up a second for the seven. Uh, nine word. Nine word. Six, seven. Close enough. It, the first one ever done, this was invented by Dean Jackson, who also invented the squeeze page many years ago. His original first one was nine word. I guess what I'm asking though is, is there a time that is more appropriate to send them that would they be interested as far as the time? I mean, like you're not going to be sending these out on Saturday morning. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Why not? Because hmm? if this is business to business, they're not at work. No, no, no. no. But if Personal, you could do. Yeah. You could totally do it. It, doesn't, when, it might be better for you to hit them on the weekends or later at night. Um, business to business, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Um, I don't have stats on this particular email, but I can go look through all of our B2B clients and say, across the board, does Tuesday at 8.45 a.m. give us the best open rate and let you know if you want. Because yeah. we, on behalf of them, God knows how many millions of emails we send. Okay, um, so I'm writing to you in the hopes of finding the appropriate person who handles blank. I, this is a trick. I also wrote to Bob, Jane, and Steve in that pursuit. You're picking four people at the company. One person, this is John, and I also wrote to Bob, Jane, and Steve. You're not CCing them. Because then Jane's going to get an email saying, I wrote to Bob, John, and Steve. Steve's going to get one saying, I wrote to Bob, John, and I can't remember their names. Um, and Sue. Uh, Sue. I don't know. <laughs> Whoever. If it makes sense to talk, let me know how your calendar looks. The blurb about who you are and what you do. And why, uh, this is us, Market Domination Funny, uh, Direct Response Marketing Firm, written about in Forbes and Inc. We, Seth has created an internal marketing machine that's transformed internal client marketing referral generation of thousands of advisors and the blah, blah, blah. If you're the appropriate person to speak with, what does your calendar look like? If not, who do you recommend I talk to? Sincerely, Bill Kanoki. And what will happen is they will respond and say, no, it's not me, talk to John. Or they will say, no, and I don't know if the company's too big. Or they'll all start talking to each other and they'll say, oh, John was right, and I forwarded him the email and told him to talk to you, and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, because you use the social proof of, I'm writing to these three different people, don't do four, don't do seven, don't do 10, do three, it works. That's, that's also, you're, you're getting other names that you've written to out of LinkedIn. Um, we are. Um, we have a scraping program that is scraping data from LinkedIn, giving us real email addresses, snail mail, phone numbers, all kinds of other contact info um, that we're using for it. But for example, before we had that, I had a virtual assistant um, in Colorado who was getting paid mid cheaply to go find the information before I found the software program that does it for us. So you could get it from LinkedIn. You could get it from the company website. Yeah, the website. 
Just the our team page will have all other people right. on it. I snag their uh, website. They'll show our team. They're happy to show their employees and you know Sue Smith. And sometimes if it doesn't have the emails listed on the site, you just need one um, cause then it's the same format. It's d.stanfield at 3mdental.com. Then it would be jk.watt at 3mdental. So sometimes if we can't find that on the website, we will physically call and just go, what's Dean's email address? And then we know exactly what to write for everybody else. but it is working really well. All right, um, so how are you gonna do all this direct mail, in this case, without doing the work? Um, and why should you do it via direct mail in the first place really quick? Direct mail lets you sell in a vacuum, because nobody else that does what you do is probably, there's no ski guy mailing. There's just not. Uh, every, there is less competition, and there's also less regulation. Nobody can see it. So Facebook changes their rules, Google changes their rules, they change their rules all the time. Um, and B, they're now, whatever your political beliefs are aside, they are censoring free speech online, some of the, you can't necessarily say, th say everything that you would wanna say in an on, depending on the ad. We're fighting right now, we have a local real estate company that we're doing an ad for um, you know, Buffalo home housing market is so hot, find out what your home is worth. And we're on our third round of appeals to Facebook because they say you cannot advertise housing opportunities. I'm like, it's not a housing opportunity, it's real estate. Now, we have a dedicated Facebook ad rep that we can call, but this client is only spending a couple hundred bucks a month so Facebook won't talk to us about anyone who doesn't spend enough money, so I can't call my guy and say, can you just approve, manually go in and say it's approved? I gotta go through their stupid automated system until eventually a person looks at it and goes, oh, this is a real, local real estate company, they're fine. So direct mail, you don't have to deal with any of that. Unless you're a financial advisor, you have to run it through compliance. You're right. your own. You really can do whatever you want. Legally, of course. Yes. Legally and ethically, but. Yes. There's no regulatory body. I mean, the Federal Communications Commission, but you'd have to be really big to and be for them to notice, I would imagine, a direct mail campaign. I mean, we do a movie star campaign where like we do a picture of a movie. We'll tie it in a theme like uh, is your marketing, you know, Iron Man or is it rusty or whatever it is, you know, something like that, something cheesy. And we'll put a picture in there. And obviously Iron Man is copyrighted and owned by Marvel and Disney and whoever. Um, and every once in a while, if I give one of those to a client, they'll go, I don't have the rights to use this image of Iron Man, you know? And I'll say, how many are you gonna mail? 300? I'm like, do you really think you're gonna get sued? I'm like, first of all, let's go find you a public domain image. You know, we never had any problems with Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama campaigns. They're public figures. But unless you know you accidentally mailed a picture of Julia Roberts on a postcard to Julia Roberts' house, you're probably, I can't give you legal advice, but you're probably not gonna get in trouble. But if it shows up in your YouTube video, if it shows up in a right. Facebook ad or something, that's where they're gonna- They'll ban it. Copyrighted image and boom, boom, boom. Yep. Direct mail? Boom, boom is a technical marketing term. <laughs> yes. All right, so the software that we're using that we've recently discovered that automates all of this um, and does some really cool stuff that is called Send Gym, and I'll give you a link later. Um, you'll know you got to the site because it looks like this. You can get started with a free trial. Um, you can pay nothing, and it's 99 bucks a month, and you have a 14-day trial, or you can pay yearly and save some money. It's not my job to sell it to you. I'm just showing you. Once you sign up, you opt in. They will give you a immediate upsell to prepay um, for like a year, two years and get a discount. Um, then you have to check your email to activate your account. You can also join the Send Gym Pro Tools Facebook group and talk to other people who are using it. There's your fancy email that says click here to register. And you're gonna fill out the information to register your account. I'm gonna whip you through this. They will send you free samples of the direct mail that they have. It doesn't cost you anything. They just ask for a shipping address. And look at that, now they can market to you via direct mail because they're smart marketers. All right, so this is what the software actually looks like. 
Now, um, where is my little highlighter thingy? Okay, uh, they have a training program to teach you how to use it. And every time you watch a training video, they're gamified. If you watch a video, you get points for free direct mail campaigns, for free printing, because they figure if they've educated you, you're more likely to use it, which is smart. Um, so it does all kinds of cool stuff. It will, if you've ever heard of send out cards, this is send out cards on steroids done much better. Um, if you haven't heard of send out cards, don't worry about it. So it will send greeting cards, it will send postcards, it will send letters, it will send gifts. So you can send your clients gifts with this. Um, it will send emails, it will send voice broadcasts. So that message when you answer the phone and a recording plays, or you have a voicemail and you never answered the phone, it does that. Um, it does all sorts of cool stuff I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, so that is me putting myself in. You can enter people one at a time, or you can just upload an Excel spreadsheet if you have a client database or something, and poof, they're all in the system. Or it can generate leads for you, which is really cool. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, do, 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 hang on a second, this is me importing a list. You upload an Excel file, and it works. And magically, now they're all in there and I can choose to send stuff to all of them, to one of them. You can create a multi-step campaign in this. So you could have a postcard go out every, other, every month for 12 months in a row. You could have a campaign that goes out three steps in a row every three days for a week. All right, nine days is a week and a half. You can make this as sophisticated or as one-off as you want. Uh, let me see here. You can send a gift, a voicemail, an email, a greeting card, a letter. Um, it has libraries and libraries of stuff in there already done for you that you can customize. So anniversaries, apology cards, birthday cards, congratulations, customer retention, employees, get well soon, motivational referrals, reminder cards, prospecting, sympathy, thank you. Wedding, I don't know if I would do my wedding invitation on SendJim. We'll see about that. Um, you pick a card and then you say, I want, I said sales prospecting. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet. There's all, you can scroll down. There's a ton of different nice to meet you cards. So there's a ton in every category. We miss you, uh, customer retention, and then you can change the text to make it whatever you want, or you can upload your own custom designs if you want, which Kristen just played with. So I did a nine word postcard. Are you still looking to grow your business? Seth, call me. So that just dropped, so I will let you know how many phone calls I get. But I uploaded a list of inactive, unconverted leads that I had direct mail addresses for. And now I sent the nine word email that will land the same day as the nine word postcard. Uh, let's see, now some other cool stuff you can do. See, now I have a we miss you nine word card. So you sent the email and the, and the Mail. Yes. Same yes. Okay. On the same, they will get there on the same day. So I'm going to hit them in multiple places. You can tag different, you can create tags to sort your contacts. So you can say, I met these people at this event. Um, these people came from this list. These are my LinkedIn connections. Um, the. All right, so some of the really cool features, if you are wanting to send to a specific physical location type of thing, is you can type in an address and Google Earth will pop up and scroll down. And here we are at 5888 Main Street, which is our office. And you can see the roof of our building. And I can now take a tool and draw a box, a circle, anything or freehand drawing around any number of addresses. I don't have to know the address. It will find them, so in this case I drew a big box, and it says send mailing to 54 people. It goes and finds the name and addresses and will send it to them. It's very cool. Names and addresses that are already in your list. Nope, no, just, just anybody. So if there was an affluent neighborhood, say Spalding Lake, you wanted to hit, you could draw a radius around, you can zoom out so it's big enough, draw a radius around the entire Spalding Lake and it'll go find every address. 
And I said, that's awesome for residential. Will it work for commercial? And he said, yes, there is a show commercial button. So I drew a big long box around Main Street as a test and said, oh, take out all the residences, no houses, no apartments, just give me all the businesses in that box that I drew and it found 54. So I can now do business to business, direct mail of leads I didn't even know I had because it goes and finds them. Now, Tom Larson, who has been asking me for like a year, uh, who isn't here today, who extended his stay in Vegas this week for his birthday. Shame on you, Tom. Um, you don't get to see, well, Vegas is probably more fun. So um, he's been asking for years, I want to target houses that have pools. And I can't get a direct mail list of houses that have pools. I can't target houses with pools on Facebook because house with pool wasn't a data select. It wasn't a choice. But I can do it here because I can just keep, I can just go to a neighborhood and draw a box around each house. I can see which houses have pools. You see the blue water. And I can just go draw a box around that one, a box around those, and say, I want to hit those 12 houses in that cul-de-sac that have pools. So you can draw more than one box? And you can draw more than one box. <laughs> you can do that on Zillow. I would wait for you to pools and give you an overview, and then it'll give you all the addresses. <laughs> I did not know that. Which I would then need to type in somewhere, type into an Excel file and import into here. So is the real estate. That's the real yes. Yeah. There you go. I did not know you could do that. This is one. See how much the house is worth. Right, because Zillow is a real estate listing site. Yes. So that works. Um, this one will automatically then say, okay, those twelve people are now on your list, and you can mail them. <laughs> Well, it gets really cool. Um, creepy, creepy, sorry. Um, you could hit a cul-de-sac. Um, so it's really cool. I said, so they have cards in here because they started in the home services business. HVAC, plumber, pool guy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So real estate. So I said, could you customize the cards in mass? I said, could I say, because we did a campaign once years ago for a real estate agent where we used Google Earth, got a picture of the house, and then put it on a postcard and sent it to the people who lived at the house. Um, and got people freaked out going, you drove by, you took a picture of my house. I'm like, no, it's Google Earth. They didn't apparently know what that was. This one will do it automatically. So you could say, give me a picture of that house, put it on that card, and send it to that person. The reason why we originally did it was we had a landscaper and the campaign was based on measurements from Google Earth, this is how big your yard is, this is what we would charge to mow it. We don't even have to drive out to your house to give you an estimate and waste your time. Here's how much it'll cost, do you want it or not? I like that. Mm -hmm. Which freaked people out because they didn't know there was this thing called Google Earth. <laughs> so lawn service people could do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Snow plowing, can see how big your driveway is. Roof, roof, yep. They should do it. Cool service company, the possibility of roof. Yes. Because the roofers are usually not recent. Because I know like our right. house is a few years ago and I can tell by the trailer right. that's in the driveway. <laughs> so there's. But it still increases response even if you only just piss off more people. Um, so website is howtoachieveyourbusinessgoals.com if you want to check it out.